Namaste and good morning everyone. We will start our class with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Now we'll chant Mahamatunya Mantra three times to pray for those who are in suffering. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Ivabandhanan Mutyur Mukshi Yamamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Iva Bandhana Mutyur Mukshi Yamamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Iva Bandhana Mutyur Mukshi Yamamrutat Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Welcome everyone. We'll start our class. This is the concluding class for this course. So for today, we will, we don't have any new topics to cover. We will have the summary of all the topics and any questions you may have, we will cover those questions. One person asked if we could cover participles in more detail. So we'll cover, I'll cover a little bit more details on the participles. So if you go to the summary for the class the best way i would probably go for the about the summary is to just go to the repository and look at the class notes so class notes are done pretty wonderfully well and uh, if we go with the class notes then you will automatically see the topics which are to be covered. So, for example, if you look at the class one, so we started this course, it has been more than four months. And after Sanskrit 01, which was relatively basic course, we started this course to be a little bit more advanced continuation for the same thing so one thing we did was we defined the scope 
for this course. And these are the major topics for Sanskrit grammar. Sandhi, Shabda Rupa, that is nominal forms, verbal forms, Dhatu Rupa, Samasa, the compound words, Krut Pratyaya, and Tadhita Pratyaya. So when we started, there is a message that there is a shift in Europe for winter time. So we now have 2 p.m. WhatsApp 3 p.m. was written. So if Tapasyananji can send in a, another message for WhatsApp, by WhatsApp uh, to specify that the class is started and in Europe there was a shift of time, it may help some people who might have thought in Europe that class would start after one hour. So, Sanskrit two course, we decided that any addition to what we covered in Sanskrit one course, we did cover those things. Plus, we covered the new topics, Samasa and Krut Pratyaya. And Tadhita Pratyaya, a glimpse may be provided, we said. So we did cover some Tadhita Pratyaya, but I did not specifically mention that those are Tadhita Pratyaya words. So today I'll just tell you uh, some words which we did cover as a part of Tadhita Pratyaya in the last class. And that was related to these kind of words. So Bhagavat, Balavat, Balin, Matimat. These are the Tadhit Pratyaya. So this Vat, you see, and this In, and Mat. So these are all Tadhit Pratyaya. That means that we already have a nominal. These are called secondary nominals. So there is already a nominal called Bala. Bala means strength. And then we put another suffix on that nominal to make it Bala Vat, Ban, who has a strength. As far as samasa is concerned, we will see which all samasas we covered. So we did cover some samasa, not in great detail. There is still a lot of work in samasa to be covered. But we did touch upon the some basic topics of samasa. And what we did in fairly good detail was krit pratyaya. So all the participles we studied, these are all krit pratyaya. There are about 125 Krut Pratyas. So we only saw a very few of them. But the ones which we covered, they are quite important. Similarly, in class 2, we started with this new topic called Samasa. So Samasa, if you remember, there are four major types of Samasa. Dandra Samasa, that is Ubhaya Pada Pradhana, that means both components, both constituents have equal importance. Tatpurush Samasa, the subcategory has Karmadhara Samasa for that. Avyayi Bhava Samasa and Bahubrihi Samasa. So, Dondo Samasa in English, we said an example could be like pots and pens. So, both components are equally valid. So, for example, in Sanskrit, I can say Rama and 
Shyama, they are going to school. So I can either say Ramascha, Shyamascha, there must be some example here. So here, this is the example. So Ramaha, Shyamaha, both are going to school. Rama and Shyama are going to school. So either I can say Cha for the end mark, Ramaha, Cha, Shyama, Cha, or I can make a compound word, Rama, Shyama, Vidyalayam, Gachata. So both of them are correct. Both of them convey the same meaning. Samasa means all samasa, one of the meaning of samasa is also to shorten. So it represents the same concept in a shorter form. So that's a dondo samasa. Tatpurusha samasa, that is, so in dondo samasa, it's both constituents have equal importance, the words. One thing is the difference between samasa and sandhi, because that is one point of confusion for many people. So samasa is between two words and then you can bring more and more words together and a samasa could have multiple words and end result is into one word. Sandhi is between two sounds which is represented by two letters of the alphabet. So the last letter of the first word and the first letter of the second word because of certain phonetic rules they come together and make a common sound two sounds merge into one sound or one of the sounds may change that is called sandhi unlike samasa where the two words or more than two words become one word and you cannot put them separately Sandhi is just a positional thing that two sounds happen to be pronounced close to each other and therefore the Sandhi takes place. So Tatpurusha Samasa, the second constituent is more, more important like bookshelf. So here we are referring to the shelf for the books. Shelf is the main element. If I say bring a bookshelf, person will not bring the book but the shelf. Then Avyai Bhava Samasa, we did not see much of that. It is Purva Pada Pradhana and the whole word becomes indeclinable. So the first word is indeclinable and the compound word also becomes an indeclinable word. Bahubrihi samasa, this is Anya Pada Pradhana. Importance is to the implied meaning, a third word. So, like black belt in English, does not refer to black or a belt, refers to a person. So, when I say black belt, I want to see a black belt, I'm referring to a person whom I want to see. So black belt, so Bahubrihi Samasa becomes an adjective. And in Gita class, we saw some of those compounds where those compound words are used for as an adjective to Arjuna. So these are the four major types of compounds. We did see some of the Dondua and Tatpurusha in somewhat detail but not so much of the other com other compounds so much. So, still there is a lot of detail to be covered in Samasa. But some basic idea you got. Then in class 3, we did a few more nominals. So, I will, and some consonants and the rules. So, this I will not go into detail here. Class 4, we did some samasa, tatpurusha samasa specifically. So one of the very common tatpurusha samasa is the vibhakti samasa. So tatpurusha samasa is three types. Vibhakti samasa, karma dharaya tatpurusha and nai tatpurusha.
so vibhakti tat purusha the based upon the declension of the first member so this is the more common among all the tat purusha so for example dutiya tat purusha where the second case is used like dukham atitah dukha atitah beyond sorrow then turtiya tat purusha harina tratah hari tratah rescued by hari out of all these tat purusha the sashthi tat purusha the sixth case that is the most common rama dasah ramasya dasah rama servant so this is the most common to be used and then after that tritiya tat purusha but then once in a while you will find the use of other tat purusha samasa also so here some statistics is there more than 70% of tat purusha samasa are in sixth case and 17 to 18% in the third case so That's that's just a general statistics, and uh, not like uh, I have not evaluated every Sanskrit literature, all the compound words in words in there, but some some texts, some people have analyzed and come up with this statistics. Then in the class five, we did see the some verbs, tenses, and moods, and what are the verb roots. so as you know there are two types of endings parasmai padi and atmani padi and the verbs which take both the endings they are called ubhay padi but remember endings are only two kinds parasmai padi endings and atmani padi endings so these are the for the present tense these are the endings we studied ti tah anti si tha tha mi vah ma and in atmani padi so very commonly we used many times these verb forms gachhati gachhata gachanti you all are very must be quite familiar by now these so here are the how many tenses and moods are there in sanskrit so present is there past there are three types of past we covered one of them and then these are the moods we covered two of them and late lakara is not to be covered it is used primarily in vedas so out of all these tenses and moods we primarily saw five lut lang and lut the future lot and vidhile we saw five of them quite detailed and remaining five they are covered in the further chapters of the book so sanskrit subodhini the book we are following the other tenses and moods they are covered in the later chapters so later chapters are quite heavily dealing with the verbal forms in sanskrit subodhini then there is another concept called gana that all the roots they are divided into there are about 2000 verbal roots in sanskrit and out of 2000 about 500 are the ones which you will find 4 to 500 which are most commonly used so if something somebody understands those 4 to 500 roots they would be pretty okay in understanding most of the sanskrit texts these roots are divided into 10 classes they are called gana classes are called gana and the names of the classes are simply named after the first root of the class like bhu bhuadi bhuadi means bhu etc adi means etc or starting with so starting with bhu so 
not a very imaginative way to nomenclature, but that's how it is used. And first class has more than half the roots, 1079. All other classes are combined, they will have less than that. The four classes out of these 10 classes, first, fourth, sixth, and tenth, they have a characteristic that the stem which we make of these verbs from these classes that ends in akara. Because it ends in akara, the forms of the tenses they become pretty easy. And these are the four major classes we studied in our course, Sanskrit O2. The remaining classes, remaining six classes, they are covered in the further chapters of the book. So that's what I told you that further chapters of the book, they are pretty heavy in the verbal forms of the different tense and moods, as well as the different classes of the verbs. So why the, why the, roots are divided into the classes because there is a vikarana, the special suffix you could say or infix that comes between the verbal root and these endings which we saw, the, the, these endings. So between these endings like gachati or lab, let's say labhate, so the root is lab, then akara is the infix because it's the first class so akara comes and then te so lab a te lab a te like that we have seen all that we also saw how to make the stems and the the verbal forms so all that has been covered then if i go so we saw some of the further nominal cases these were these were already explained in sanskrit 1 but there was some repetition here in sanskrit 2 class so prathma is the subject like Rama Gachati, the first case nominative, second case accusative is the object, Rama goes to the school, Vidyalayam Gachati, so Vidyalayam comes in the second case, then third case instrumental or it is used by or with Sita Ramayana Sahagachati. Then fourth case is the dative. So these words, these are taken from the linguistics. So that's why they are not used in English a lot like dative, ablative, genitive, locative. Because English doesn't have the case, there is no simple one-to-one -one translation for the English words. So that's why a lot of things in Sanskrit are taken from the linguistics because Sanskrit uses a lot of concepts which are not in English and therefore the whole science of linguistics which actually came from Sanskrit, they have taken a lot of concepts from Sanskrit to define those words. Panchmi is the ablative, aham ramat pustakam grunami, then sashti, ramasya bhrata lakshmana, of and, and then saptami. The locative seventh case. Rame Sadgunaha Santi. In Rama, there are a lot of good qualities. And then Sambodhana, vocative. If you are calling somebody, Hey Rama, Atra Agacha. Oh Rama, please come here. Then we saw some of, in the seventh class, we saw pronouns, indeclinable interrogative words, some particles. So 
these are the major pronouns we saw asmad as i first person pronoun second person pronoun is you and these are the only words are used in first person and second person asmad and yushmad i think there is a typo here instead of class 13 class or sanskrit one class 13 so not typo sorry it is fine and uh, because we covered it in sanskrit one class also the person in he has made a reference for people to easily follow it and then the third person pronouns so all the other words they are referring to the third person and third person pronouns are used in all the three genders first person and second person they are used they are common for all the three genders so if you have any questions please feel free to send it through the chat we'll see how much we can cover but most of the questions will be answered if you go through these notes and the videos then we covered the sandhis pragruya anuswara and vyanjana sandhi in class 8 so i will not go to the very specific rules this we have done many times in our exercises also then here is the krut pratyaya we covered some krut pratyaya here so sanskrit this is one thing and this is gives you a very specific structure for sanskrit that the words are combined all the words without any exception all the words are divided into prakruti and pratyaya prakruti means the base and pratyaya means suffix so that's why sanskrit has perfect etymology you could always find that what is the base and what is the suffix for any given sanskrit word which appears in the text so these suffixes are the ones which are applied either to a verbal root directly or they could be applied more than one in sequence so it could be just one suffix or it could be more than one suffix generally you will find most of the words having more than one suffix so we we so krit pratyaya is one suffix which makes the nominal words so there are some suffix we saw for example tita anti that makes the verbal forms atmane padi and parasmai padi suffixes krut pratyaya is the one type of suffix which makes the nominal base forms so one of them i be saw truch pratyaya and only tru remains of the truch chakara is dropped and there is a whole science behind when you study panini that why a certain letters are dropped what is the reason what is the purpose he put these letters and then drop them so even if the letter is dropped he has created certain other rules panini has created certain other rules in the grammar that based upon which letter is dropped certain other operations take place on that word so that's like a mastermind to come up with this log structure in a language so one of the example is so krut pratyaya are always put from the verbal roots and they make the nominal forms nominal base forms so like kru and tra so kartru so there there are there are a, some rules why kru becomes kar and kartru means doer so that's how the sense of the so whenever you apply a suffix panini has also given of course the meaning in which that suffix is to be applied so truch pratyaya is applied in the sense of doer of the action so verb represents the action and truch pratyaya represents the doer of that action so kartru 
the doer. Similarly, pach is to cook. Paktru means the one who cooks. And like that. So then we also saw Pandi methodology for generating the nominal forms, Upasargas. Upasargas we had covered earlier, but some more detail were covered in Sanskrit O2. And if you remember this form, I can also pull from the Excel file. These endings. So every, it's an amazing thing that every single nominal form, and we have studied so much and some of you might be feeling overwhelmed that so many nominal forms are there, so many declensions. And Tapasya Nanji is creating a very comprehensive document for you to refer to containing all the nominal forms we have studied. All the nominal forms, Panini has given a single table of suffixes. And without any exception, all the nominal forms and pronominal forms, they use this set of suffixes to derive them. And then there are rules. So that's quite an amazing thing. I always find it pretty mesmerizing that how could he come up with this whole idea to create to derive all these nominal forms of all sort of words. And there are some words for which are, we haven't even studied. They are considered very difficult and complex words. Even for those words, he has only this set of suffixes to be used. Similarly in the verbal forms. So just one set of suffixes and derive all the nominal and verbal forms. So therefore, in Sanskrit, there are two sets of people who consider Sanskrit very difficult because everything has to be memorized. Like there are so many nominal forms, so many verbal forms, so many declensions, so many conjugations. You, you have to memorize all that and Sanskrit becomes a language for too much memorization. That is one aspect. The way I consider it, if it is studied properly, you don't have to memorize anything. You just have to understand all you can memorize probably this table of the suffixes and you understand all the rules which are applied on different roots, different verbal roots to come up with the nominal forms. So Sanskrit in my opinion involves a lot of understanding rather than a lot of a memorization. But that does require a lot of effort because there are a very good number of rules. The, but the fact is that if you understand those, you become like a walking dictionary. You really don't have to refer to the dictionary also. Because as I told you, every word in Sanskrit is derived from these verbal roots using the suffixes and the rules which are applied on those suffixes. Then we saw Karmani and Bhavi Prayoga. So Sanskrit has two types of passive. We call Karmani Prayoga is the passive voice, which is similar to in English. And Bhavi Prayoga that we translate as impersonal passive. There is no equivalent in English for that kind of translation. So therefore, many times the translation is done in a very simple manner in English. But Sanskrit has a very distinct way to represent those concepts. So like Rama told a story, a story was told by Rama. That's how we say in English, the active and passive. In Sanskrit, it would be Balakaha. Let me see the actual usage here. So, Ramaha Vidyalayam Gachati. 
रामेण विद्यालय गम्यते सो दिस इज द कर्तरी एंड कर्मणि प्रयोग फर्स्ट केस एंड थर्ड केस एंड देन देर भावे प्रयोग वेयर यू यूज इट फॉर द इन ट्रांजिटिव लाइक द बॉय लाफ्स यू कैन नॉट मेक ए पैसे ऑफ इट इन इंग्लिश इंग्लिश डजेंट सपोर्ट दैट बट द इट विल बी इक्वेल एंड टू लाइक सेंग लाफिंग इज बींग डन बाय द बॉय सो इन टेक्स्ट वेन यू सी द बालक हसति और बालके न हस्यते इट बोथ आर ट्रांसलेटेड एज बॉय लाफ्स इन इंग्लिश बिकॉज इंग्लिश हैज दैट स्ट्रक्चर ओनली बट इन संस्कृत बोथ स्ट्रक्चर आर पॉसिबल एंड बोथ आर यूज क्वाइट फ्रीक्वेंटली so when you know the sanskrit you can understand a little bit more subtleties and you can enjoy the text then we saw the future tense lutlakara and i lutlakara is just a simple future tense these two classes 10 and 11 and 12 if you can go through the notes it will give you a pretty good idea of what is the passive voice and impersonal passive voice in sanskrit so future tense is simple there are two future tenses in sanskrit we covered one of them root lakara that's generally easier to have the verb verbal forms like gachhati becomes gamishyati gamishyata gamishyanti and there is a passive corresponding passive also so in class 13 we covered some stems just a few nominal forms so there is not much of very concepts here except in consonant ending stems we saw that if you have this table that is pretty helpful so it is pretty easy pretty directly applied this table in the consonant forms for example marut and this we saw in detail earlier that marut maruta marutaha all these things they are applied very easily on these on the i mean the suffixes are applied on that base form and you get the end forms without many other rules coming into play then uh, 14 15 and 16 i covered the participle forms so that i'll cover in a little bit more detail today just from a little different perspective and 17th we covered last time the some more nouns and pronouns so this i want to tell you that exercise we covered two lessons here lesson 23 and 24 some of you have submitted the solutions for those exercises others who have not yet please continue to solve them and you can post the solution you can send us the exercise solutions or any questions you may have exercise 241 especially is a little bit more difficult because the author has tried to use the concepts and therefore many sentences have come out to be a bit unnatural like you will not find those kind of structures in the normal sanskrit text so 241 has become a little difficult and if you are able to not do everything you can refer to the solutions and ask any questions you may have now as you can see these notes they are a wonderful source of your learning and they are available for you so when we started this course sanskrit o2 because there was a lot of demand for this course to start sanskrit one if you remember there were we had about 700 people registered and 150 stayed till the end 
and that's a pretty good number more than what I was expecting. Sanskrit O2 course. So based upon the request of the people, we started this course and we followed this book, Sanskrit Subodhini. So in Sanskrit one course, if you remember, Amit Baba, Yogacharya Amit Baba from Seattle, he did a wonderful job for preparing all the class notes. And we have very detailed class notes for Sanskrit 01. This time, uh, Amit Baba for Sanskrit 02, he requested to be excused from the duty of class preparing the class notes. And because he is also the secretary of Kriya Yoga Institute, the organization, so has a lot of other responsibilities on his shoulder as well. So for me, I did not know whom to turn to, so I requested the Swami Tapasyananji. And I also requested Bindima. So both of them gladly agreed. And Bindima has been first preparing these notes from these classes. And then Swami Tapasyananji is editing them later on to put some cross references as you saw. Uh, also the color coding where the things become easier to follow. So Finally, all these notes are coming in a very beautiful shape, thanks to both Bindima and Tapasyananji. And also, if you look at, in Sanskrit O2, we have a lot of class videos. And just like Matt Vava did the class videos for the first course, he did a wonderful job for videos for this as well as Bhagavad Gita course and he came up with a technique by which to edit these videos in a very short time so that therefore we were able to post most of the videos very shortly after the class ends to facilitate those who could not attend the live class for some reason so these videos have also become a wonderful source for you or even other people in the future to learn and we are putting all these videos on youtube so that there will be a channel and i'll i'll be inform the details of those channel and links to you later on by whatsapp and email so that you can share those links with your fr friends and family so that this resource can be useful for people who would like to learn sanskrit later also so all the videos for Sanskrit 1 course, Sanskrit 2 course and Bhagavad Gita course, we are, we are going to put on the YouTube. Now, this as far as this course is concerned, Sanskrit 2, also if you remember earlier, Ben Baba was taking care of the emails and we had a lot of emails coming at that time. So Ben Baba was also learning the Spanish and he found that it was difficult for him to learn both the languages which are very different from each other uh, simultaneously. And I understand that. So he, all, he also asked to be excused from the duty. So again, I didn't have much anybody to turn to. So I requested Tapasya Ninji, Swami Tapasya Ninji here that if he can take care of the emails aspect. And Swami Tapasya Ninji here, he is also taking care of a lot of duties related to the office work. So he is still agreed because he loves Sanskrit. And uh, primarily it is because of his efforts that we have been able to deliver this course in such an effective manner with all the materials, with all the class notes, the exercise solutions, uh, as well as answering many of the emails. Uh, without his help and uh, very active contribution, the, we won't have been able to come up with all these deliverables. So I want to thank everybody, especially Swami Tapasyananji for making this course a very valuable contribution. I just want to also go through the part spill because that was one topic which was so part spills you can understand from 
this perspective also. So we have parts below all, of course, all the videos and class notes and you can take a look at it. But if you just want to understand in a very basic way, think of it this way. We have parts pills for active voice and parts pills for passive voice. What parts pill is actually doing? Parts pill is replacing the verb form. So if I say, for example, our standard example, Rama Vidyalayam Gachati. So Gachati here is the active verb. And what participle is doing here? Participle is replacing this verb. So participle, if you remember Gachati, the present, so what kind of participle will come? Because it's a present tense, it's a Kartari Prayoga, active voice. So present active participle will come. And that participle is Gachat. Gachat, that's a participle, one who is going. So because it will be referring to the subject here, it's Gachan. So Gachan will come. So I can just do the whole thing and say Gachan. The important part here to remember is, so this sentence becomes, but the important part here is to remember this, this is the verb form, gachati, gachan becomes a nominal form. And it has to be in the correspondence with the nominal form here, ramaha, so ramaha gachan. Because it's a nominal form, we have to supply a verb. We normally say asti. It, you won't find normally this verb in the usage, but it is implied. Ramaha gachan asti. So Rama, so meaning will be the same. Rama is going to the school. Rama is going to the school. One particular caution only about this participle that this kind of sentence usage is not common. Panini specifically says that this sentence usage means making the verb replacing in the main clause by the present active participle is not common. When I say not common means take, take the another sentence. So if I say I want I I am seeing Rama going to the school. So here if I have to translate this sentence in Sanskrit, it will be aham. Vidyalayam Gachantam Ramam Pashyami. So Gachantam came because I am seeing Rama, Rama in the second case. So Gachantam came in the second case here, like from here. So I am seeing Rama going to the school. This is much more common than this. So when I say common means what? Panini says that this is not to be used. This kind of formation where you put it in the first case. But some grammarian says that in certain cases, it is okay to use. 
so that's where i meant by less common that some grammarian says you cannot use this const const construction some grammarians are of the opinion that it's okay to use so in the texts sanskrit text standard sanskrit text you will find rarely this kind of usage it's there in some some cases it's there but this kind of in other cases so instead of the first case in other cases it is more common so third case fourth case fifth case sixth case this is only for the present participle uh, for the shatra and sanash pratyay for the past participle there is no such thing past participle is very common in the first case also so so just to remember this part that main aspect of participle is re replacing the verbal form but participle itself is a nominal so you have to use it along with the it becomes an adjective to the main nominal so use it with the main nominal that is the thing so if you look at here if i look at it from this perspective active voice so active voice there is a present or future tense parasmai padi this is the suffix for making the participle shatra or at like just like i we saw then present or future tense for the atmane padi verbs this is ana as the suffix like bhashamana ana becomes mana for bases which are ending in akara because most of the verbal forms we are studying with the verbal base ending in akara we use mana instead of ana but actual suffix is ana so for that we saw some of the some of the structures there nindishyap like shyamaha nadyam gahate then rama si shyama diving into the river ramaha nadyam gaha manam shyamam pashyati like that so again because it's a so these two suffixes shatra and sanach as i said they are generally not used in the first case but in other cases that is not a problem with the past participle so in active voice you have covered the present or future tense for prasmai padi and atmane padi then past tense is tavat that is the pratyaya and past tense in case of akarma karud we also have ta and roots of motion like rama ha gata ha rama has gone then if you look at in the passive voice so you can you can understand from this perspective we have participles for active voice that means they are replacing the function of active voice verb and participles in passive voice that means they are replacing the function of passive voice verb so again these these uh, suffixes remain the same for the passive voice also so passive voice if you remember ramayana vidyalaya gamyate so ramayana vidyalaya gata like that and past tense for the past tense we have takara so there are only three suffixes four suffixes if you look at ata ana tavat and ta for all the participles whether past tense future tense present tense active voice passive voice these are the only parts only only suffixes out of that tavat is very clear it's only one usage past tense active that's where the tavat is 
so we are left with three atta and ana they are used for present and future tense respectively parasmaipadi and atmanipadi verb both in the passive voice and active voice remaining takara it's the most versatile participle primarily it is used in the past tense passive voice but also used in the active voice in case of akarmaka roots as well as the roots of motion so this was just a short overview of the things which we have studied so far you can keep submitting your questions to the email keep submitting the exercises many people have raised this concern that can we keep submitting the exercise so yes please please feel free to keep submitting the exercises and also you can send the questions so many of the comments you can also see many i'm i'm really thankful and grateful to all of you there is a question for how long the class notes and videos remain in the repository so videos we are going to put on the youtube so they will pretty much remain in the public domain going forward uh, class notes we cannot put on youtube we so that's why we have to have in this uh, repository only but there is no plan right now to discontinue that they they, sh they will be there for indefinite time i would recommend you though that you can download for your own purpose and study them and again as i said any questions if you have please feel free to send it to us so, so some of the people are saying that they have they are left behind in the homework can they keep submitting absolutely please feel free to keep submitting and today sanchita ma is saying happy vijayadashmi so today is in usa it's ekadashi but in india it's still vijayadashmi it's a very important festival very auspicious one and uh, happy vijayadashmi to all of you so there is a comment here that namaskar swami ji i thanks a lot to full team of kyi i am honored to get a chance to study sanskrit under this perfect team i am very keen to donate a small token as a part of gratitude can i send it through zl transfer which is actually fast and easy please let me know i look forward to study and have more sanskrit class in future and your guidance thank you thank you and regarding the donation i mean you probably all know that we have this kriya.org so if you want to donate you can donate on kriya.org here uh we have the donation link donate donate now here in the bottom so uh, we are a non profit organization you can make the donations here and uh, as this mother suggested that she wants to she used this the zel uh, zel i think it's called it's pronounced as zel to make a donation and that's fine too uh if you have any questions related to that you can also send an email to institute@kriya.org so there is a comment i look forward to continue to learn sanskrit using all the tools and i am also looking forward to learn sanskrit that you also you all learn sanskrit i am looking forward to that and i know many of you put in a lot of hours to learn sanskrit and it has shown up in your knowledge in your comments in your sense of gratitude as well that people who have put a lot of effort to have done take the, taken the trouble to solve the exercises naturally their knowledge has improved considerably and i am very happy to see that 
at the same time i would like like to tell you that sanskrit is like an ocean and people devote their whole lives just to study sanskrit because you can just go deeper and deeper and as a part of this course as i am teaching i am also learning and uh, i can tell you one thing that yes i know many of you put in a lot of lot of hours but i feel that i may have put the most number of hours both studying and preparing for teaching uh, i uh, there were many days that every single day i was putting four to five hours every day the list of the nominals so tapasya nanji is updating the list of nominals to include the ones for the parts pills and for all the other nominals we covered so far in the course so you will have one sort of reference book for you to refer to uh, for all the nominals we have covered i will still recommend you many of you that you can you should try to prepare your own cheat sheet simply because you would learn better and you will also know which forms are more important for you which forms are you you can highlight them you can but if you just want to print as a reference book that's a wonderful document swami tapasyanandji is preparing and that will be available on the repository so tapasyanandji just sent a message that updated nominal declension table is uploaded so he is faster than i am here so here is the other study material and this is the nominal declension table so tapasyanandji you can imagine the amount of work he has put in 125 pages of the nominal tables he has put along with the index so you could just refer to like which particular form you want to see and it's you can just refer to that particular page so it's a wonderful work it's a, it's a very good reference book for any of you to uh, refer to as you can see this uh, this book so wow there are 140 forms but you see these are not like that you have to memorize 140 forms it is like he he has taken he has taken the time to update every single thing but many of them are simply saying that this is ending in akara so this is similar to rama this is ending in akara so this is similar to sita and even between the ones which are different the difference as we saw is very minor just like one or two words are different so from that perspective also but it's a, it's a very good reference book you can see all the forms in one shot and use it to solve the exercises or understand that understand the text so there is a comment here ramah vidyalayam gachan iti aham pashyati idi aham pashyami is this correct so it is it is, it is generally correct it is fine to say that ramah vidyalayam gachan iti aham pashyami but better usage is aham ramam aham vidyalayam gachantam ramam pashyami that's generally how you will find so there is a comment here thank you so much and grateful to you for ever teaching sanskrit sorry if i made any mistakes and not submitting the homework so submitting the homework is for your own learning and uh, it's not a mistake i know that many of you are very busy and not able to catch up ultimately it's your sincerity and your effort which counts to learn sanskrit as i told you that we can refer to all books we can have all the material available but that is primarily only as good as you put it to use so can the class notes be put in the public domain okay, i would love to recommend the class to family and friends so we when i put it on the youtube what we will do is we will put a link there for anybody who wants to 
register enroll into this class register into this class even though live classes are over uh, then we will send them the link of the repository so they will be able to access it so that's what we will do so on the youtube when we are putting the videos there itself so you can refer to them to youtube videos link and there they can just register for the class and they can get the link for all the notes there is a question here when are we starting the next class so this is one thing i i am quite okay starting the next class but i have this in this particular class uh, course i have not seen that much enthusiasm for from many of you to submit the notes and to to submit the exercises and to ask the question so unlike the course one where a lot of people showed an interest to continue i'm not sure how many of you are interested in continuing so if you are interested send us the email if there is enough interest and enough people are willing to pursue then we can start the next class uh, we will definitely have at least cup two months gap because it was a lot of work and many people need to catch up so even if we start the course it will be in the next calendar year not uh, this calendar year uh, uh, so that gives us easily two months and that is i think minimum required even for people who have been very sincere and submitting the exercises just to go back to review the whole thing to get a handle on all the things you have learned it requires time so but please send us your interest and if you want to pursue the next class we will you can we can decide accordingly Swami Tapasyananji has just informed me that ZLA this tool may not work uh, for making donations, so it's better to use the website. So this is what then I would recommend that if you can, if the tool doesn't work, then use the website. So. Thank you, everybody, for your for all the grateful comments, for all your gratitude, and um, from my perspective, my success is that you found joy in this course, in the learning, and are able to feel that yes, you can understand the scriptures a little bit better. For me, that's definitely a success. So there is a comment here. I still have difficulty with Devanagari. What do you recommend? So we did put up actually some resources, some useful links to learn Devanagari. So if you go to the Sanskrit one course here, and in the other study material, there is a useful links. And learning Devanagari script. So if you go through one or two top links, you will find that they are pretty good sites. To learn Devanagari, and uh, I believe that many of, at least I think uh, most of you who are submitting the exercises, they have all learned Devanagari, and that's a very good thing. Uh, learning Devanagari is important simply because not everything is available in transliteration script, and some things just make more sense in Devanagari. On the other hand, some things may make more sense in the transliteration, but Devanagari is the default script for the language. And in the next course, level three course, we would probably offer Devanagari alone. Uh, so, uh, as and as and as and if and when that course is offered. So, do learn Devanagari. It's not difficult. Many of you who had no exposure to Devanagari at all have not only learned devanagari you have also started submitting the exercises in devanagari which is very heartening and very nice and uh, many people reported that they can read bhagavad gita they can chant bhagavad gita albeit a little slowly but they can chant bhagavad gita using devanagari script so that's it that's it that's a very good thing So, uh, as you can see, you can probably read all the comments yourself. Most, many of the comments are in the public. And uh, so I will not be reading each and every comment, but I am very thankful to you, all of you. Uh, 
Okay, so there is a comment here. Thank you for your time dedicated to teaching us Sanskrit. We have really enjoyed the process and to be able to know more Sanskrit. Thank you. So as I said that please feel free to keep submitting the exercises. You can always send the questions to this email, learnsanskrit.kriya.org and we will try from our side to answer those questions as much as possible. So with this, my thank you, gratefulness and pranams to all of you. We'll close the class with the prayers. There is a question here. Can, should we send the request for the next class, Label 3 class, to learn Sanskrit? Yes, you can send on the same email your request for the Label 3 class. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niramaya Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Makashit dukha bhag bhavet Om Puna Madaha Puna Medam Puna Puna Mudachate Puna Sia Puna Madaya Puna Meva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Thank you, everyone.